Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Got a real high end bit of kit for you today. Oh, here we go. It's the Agilent 81160A Pulse Function Arbitrary Noise Generator, or more affectionately known as the P Fang, or maybe just Fang with the silent P. Who knows? Hmm. Anyway, that's a really nice bit of kit. We're talking about $20,000 worth here. And this one has got an optional 660 megabit pattern generator as well, worth another six grand. Oh, I'm gonna like this one. Oh yeah. Here it is, the 81160A. It's labeled as a 350 slash 500 megahertz pulse function arbitrary generator, but it does noise as well. And give you a quick sweep across the front panel here. Very, very nice. Look at those gold BNC connectors. Oh, it just oozes high performance. And of course, it's got the obligatory knob. And this particular unit has options 002 and 660. 002 means it's the two channel unit and 660 means it's got the 660 uh, meg bit per second uh, pattern generation option, which I believe is a uh, possibly a firmware uh, option, but don't quote me on that. By the way, this thing is uh, designed in Agilent's uh, German facility and they wanted me to check it out. So thank you guys for uh, sending me this one to pull apart. And yes, we'll uh, eventually get around to uh, playing with it, but this is just a teardown. And the other options on the rear, 10 megahertz uh, reference output. I'm not sure of the specs of that, whether it's oven, oven stabilized or anything like that, but you can hook an external 10 megahertz reference in. You could come from a, like a, a Stratum 1 GPS reference or something like that, Rubidium reference if you really wanted to. And it's got uh, two different modulation inputs. And here we got two USBs and a LAN connection and good old GPIB. Can't forget that, but Still got the plug on there. I don't think anyone's ever used it. And I do like instruments with these rubber boots surrounding them like that. So you can just take those off and should get access to the screws underneath. That's really quite neat. I like it. So we've got a bunch of screws on the back. It looks like possibly this uh, top cover here is just gonna lift uh, off if I take these screws off, maybe. Anyway, only one way to find out. Well, it's not going to uh, budge off. It looks like maybe the uh, nice carry handles, uh, carry straps either side are holding it down. So looks like we're gonna have to take these off possibly they might have something to do with it and it feels like it's going to come off all right let's lift the hood on 20,000 bucks worth of function gen it's going to slide off Ta-da! Woohoo! And I've got to say, my first impressions are, wow, you really are getting your money's worth here. The engineering at first glance looks absolutely phenomenal. Look at this processor board here. All of these uh, uh, DC to DC converter modules, tons of them. Lambda power supply. And look at this huge uh, heatsink on this, uh, clearly like a large BGA device under there. And I love the fan mechanism here and the uh, ducting, the ducting me mechanism. It's just great. Well, check it all out in more detail, but I think, yeah, it's one of these uh, spare no expense engineering designs. Now let's start by looking at these DC to DC converter modules. Clearly the uh, design team have gone, ah, oh, we couldn't be bothered spending our time working on you know, a power supply DC to DC converter will just use an off the shelf module. Clearly uh, decided to uh, put them or use uh, separate modules and they've used them quite a few times here. Let's have a look, one, two, three, four of those. 
And this one here is slightly different to all the others above it here. It uses a uh, Coiltronics uh, transformer there that it pro maybe it's a custom device. I don't know, but it's got a part number on it. I'll have to look that one up. And then it looks like they've duplicated a couple of these. One, two, three, four, at least five further up under there. And I was right, they haven't bothered to uh, design their own. They've gone, oh, what the hell? We need to spend our engineering time on better things, so we'll just use an off-the-shelf's Texas Instruments DC to DC converter module. And that's what that is. It's a PTH08T240. I knew it was familiar, and I've used these uh, TI uh, brick DC to DC converters before, and they save a ton of design time. And I've actually got a couple of these uh, the similar type of uh, modules and they take all of the guesswork out of designing DC to DC converters. Somebody's already done it for you and you know when you're designing a complex bit of kit or you're uh, you know you're trying to meet a deadline or something like that and if money's no object as it probably uh, might be in a $20,000 function generator you're just going to go oh what the hell I'm not going to take the risk I'll just use an off-the-shelf DC to DC converter module. Thank you very much. And these other little uh, modules here, of course, they have rolled their own, but uh, they've used, you know, top-notch components. They use Coiltronics, you've, they've used linear technology switches, and you can see the uh, input fuse down the bottom there. There it is, and uh, they're just really neatly laid out. And here's the other one up here. Oh, they've actually sprung for a China. <laughs> But uh, otherwise, you know, once again, linear technology stuff, they've spared no expense. And these are nice little layouts. There's obviously got room inside the device to actually, uh, well, cut and paste all these multiple converters. And why they need so many, I'm not 100% uh, sure. I'm probably for driving all the core voltages for this massive device under here, perhaps. Maybe it uses like, you know, three or four different uh, rails at least. There's another device under here and uh, they probably want to keep them separate as well. And as for the main supply, once again, they're spared no expense. It's a TDK Lambda made in the UK. It's an NV175. And let's take a look at the specs here. We've got, uh, looks like four channels of 12 volts at 15 amps and one auxiliary uh, 12 volt one amp channel. What a beast. And there's the IEC mains input filter. It would actually be a filter inside that can there and it's all nice and neat and tidy. Nice uh, ground spade connections there. And also they've got a uh, little ferrite there on the input leads. And clearly this uh, blue board is a pro the main processor board and they've gone for a separate embedded processor. There's an AMD uh, processor there. I'm not sure what type. I'm not going to lift the uh, label on. There's an SO DIMM connector and that's uh, for all the world like it's an off the shelf, um, you know, embedded processor board. So I'm not uh, actually uh, sure what it's uh, what it is or what it's running. I can't find any part numbers on it. That uh, label on the processor there didn't uh, turn up anything, but uh, yeah, they've just gone bugger it. We'll use an off-the-shelf processor. Probably makes the uh, software development a lot easier as well. And on the modulation inputs here, you can see two high-quality Koto read relays. They'd uh, probably be uh, shielded, sort of, you know, going to a couple of analog devices chips. And from those two modulation inputs, we get some analog devices AD92 83, nothing much doing there. They're just 8 bit uh, 100 meg sample per second ADCs. And here's what might be the key to the whole device it's a UMC UMX113 D16 G, and it's an ultra low noise coaxial resonator, as in ultra low phase noise. And uh, I'm not sure how much uh, that puppy costs, but uh, it is probably uh, the key to the uh, excellent uh, jitter performance um, and, uh, you know, an excellent performance of this function generator in general. And right near that resonator, we've got an AD7738, and that's an 8-channel 24-bit uh, Sigma Delta analog-to-digital converter. And either side of our huge, uh, presumably uh, ASIC or 
something under this large sheet sink. Either side of those, you can see a little BGA. And what is it? It's an analog devices TX DAC. In fact, it's an AD9739. And that is a, here we go, it's a 14 bit, 2.5 gig sample per second. That's gig sample RF DAC. And you can also see the serpentine traces coming out of this device here under the heatsink right next to this one. And so that's an expensive DAC. They've obviously got uh, two of those, one for each channel. And that's uh, $50, almost 50 bucks each in uh, thousand of quantity right there. And one thing I really like is this airflow duct here. They've formed it out of aluminium like this and it slopes right down there. And what it's designed to do is um, take the air input from the sides here, from both sides here, suck it under like this and then through the fans and then blows it out the bottom through the heatsink, the main processor heatsink like this. And then it blows over all the circuitry and comes out the back of the case through all that grate in there. So it's just really nice. They've gone to a lot of effort there and they've integrated that main heatsink there with sort of, you know, with this aluminium plate as well, which uh, would also act um, as part of the heatsink as well. It's great. I like it. And I think this thing just uh, sort of oozes that German engineering feel, you know, the uh, German design division at uh, Agilent. They've, you know, they've really spared no expensive then, uh, this thing. And uh, all of the uh, metalwork too, by the way, they've got multiple folded, uh, metalwork inserts it's not just the one box with the board just uh, stuck in there there's multiple layers to this whole thing it uh, really is uh, quite a work of art and if we take off this top strip here see you can see all the rfi prongs here to actually connect and get uh, better rfi shielding to that plate there and but they've got this but check this out they've got this uh, uh, metal flap here going over this um, flat flex ribbon cable, which looks like it goes to the uh, front panel uh, keypad or uh, something like that. And here's some of the other circuitry on the front panel. And once again, they've got a TDK Lambda uh, backlight uh, supply for the uh, LCD backlight there. So, you know, spared no expense at all. And there's an ISP1521, that's a uh, multi-channel USB controller. And they've got a Xilinx XC95288XL CPLD on here. Uh, maybe that's the uh, display controller, who knows? And here's something I haven't seen inside a bit of Agilent gear before. It's a microchip PIC 18LF 4455 18 series microcontroller. Go figure. And down in there, they've got a large uh, board to board interconnect to join the front panel through to the main board. And unfortunately, to get all this duct in metal work off, it looks like I'm going to have to actually take the whole thing apart and like all the other metal work and, and uh, you know, to access the screws down in there to get that thing off. So I don't really want to do that. And uh, uh, they, Agilent, were a bit hesitant for me to uh, open this thing to begin with. But of course, um, the German design group should be very proud. This is beautifully engineered. I love it. And uh, of course, you can't complain that uh, you're not getting your money's worth as far as the engineering goes. So you can see the other devices under there on the heat sinks. Really almost impossible to get the camera in there, but uh, looks like there's at least three, maybe four of them. Uh, little maybe uh, BGA devices with heat sinks stuck onto them. We'll call it uh, quits for now. But anyway, I hope you like that. That's uh, a teardown of a $20,000 function generator and it's engineered <laughs> as well as I would have expected. So that's the Agilent German Design Group. Awesome work, guys. And uh, as always, if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog uh, forum. And if you like Teardown Tuesday in this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.